Hello Epic Fails, The Black is back with this week's edition of SmackDown. Brought to you by the Unsquared Circle and in collaboration with WrestleRevolution.com, the Epic Center for all your wrestling needs. Um, I'd like to first off thank my new subscribers, which is the John WWE. I'd also like to thank all the people who left a slewful of comments on my video last week. I mean, it was like 39 comments. I didn't know some people that might not be a lot, but I mean, that's a lot. I love it because I get to interact with all of you guys. And I love interacting with my fans and getting your guys' opinions and, you know, getting your guys' suggestions. So, uh, Okanwu009 left a comment. The John WWE, Zamario, Erlen, D9393, The Jericho1123, Howard the Man, DW Squirtle, Sheen Carrollton Zero. Largest 85, Ecstasy 69, and Holy Woofy, I think that's what that says, Uli Woofy 92. Uh, comments of the week, comments of the week go to Zamario. He just basically was, you know, going back and forth with me. A lot of stuff about SmackDown that he agreed and disagreed with me, and that's all I want is to talk to you guys about what you agree. And you guys may disagree with me, that's fine. All I want is the interaction I want the comments. Also, if you want to interact with me more, go to RastonRevolution.com. We have... Uh, we have news, videos, up-to-date contests, well, we have up-to-date news, contests, and just, you know, so much crap going on. Don't forget, this if you are on WrestlingRevolution.com, this upcoming week is Turning Point, I do believe, maybe? Uh, uh, one of the TNA pay-per-views is, so is either that or Final Destination. But, um... It's coming up this upcoming Sunday, so post your predictions for the pay-per-view prediction contest. That wraps it up for the polemetries. Let's jump in to SmackDown. Get ready for the SmackDown. Get ready for the SmackDown. How you gonna react when you put in the back mark? Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the SmackDown. This week's SmackDown is across the pond in Blackpool, England. Of course, if you live there, then it would be your home country, like Zamario. Um, we start the show off with an in-ring promo with Randy Orton, where he says that he doesn't play well with others, and he kind of doesn't understand why he's the leader of teams, you know, Survivor Series team, but whatever. Wade Barrett comes out and says that he's a natural-born leader, and that he is going to decimate Randy Orton's team. Christian comes out and he starts bitching and moaning and bitching and bitching about the choke slam last week and his neck. Booker T says that nobody cares about Christian getting choke slam except Christian. Yay. And Christian says that he totally he completely endorses Wade Barrett as leader so Christian can focus on healing by Survivor Series. Okay. Then in Towards the end, Christian and Barrett jump Randy Orton until Sheamus comes out and makes the save. Teddy Long comes out and makes two matches for tonight, which is, right now, will be Christian versus Sheamus, which should have happened last week. And the main event, which is leader of uh, Team Orton versus Team Barrett, Wade Barrett takes on Randy Orton in the main event. So, first match of the night is Christian versus Sheamus. I gave this an epic 5 out of 5 White Rangers. This was an awesome match. These guys had... Um, Loads of huge moves. There was a lot of back and forth action. Sheamus and Christian work really well together. I'm glad that these two <gasps> are a part of a program. Sorry, I had a burp. Um, but in the end, Sheamus had a, a Celtic cross on a the injured neck of Christian for the win. These guys brawled in and out of the ring. This match was probably a good, I want to say 15, 20 minutes. This was a good, solid match. I would encourage anyone who has who is only like gonna watch some of SmackDown watch this match. Definitely worth watching. Uh the backstage promo with Daniel Bryan, AJ and Caitlin. Might I say AJ is looking fine. I mean I you know, Tiffany was fine. I mean really. Uh Candace Michelle was fine. Really. I think AJ might be my next WWE crush. Just because AJ she she's a nerd. She's hot. She likes video games. And I'd tap that in a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, so um, AJ says that that it would be. Oh, AJ says that it would be exciting for Daniel Bryan to cash in and become champion. Mark Henry comes in and says that uh, that 
that he has guts, that, that Daniel Bryan has guts, and that it, you know, that he's not gonna, you know, and he's gonna spill them in the ring tonight. So, great. I, I thought it was actually a pretty good backstage segment, although Caitlin was kind of off there. I don't know. Alright, next we go to another backstage segment with Teddy Long, Oksana, and Alicia Fox, which was a waste of time. All it is is Teddy telling Oksana that he wants her to watch somebody with more experience, like Alicia Fox, and then they walk out, which sets up a match later. Match two of the night, which is Teddy Biasi versus Jinder Mahal. I give this one out of five Red Rangers. This was a waste. Not not saying that these guys couldn't have a good match, but this match was like a minute long. This was a waste. I mean, really, we should have came back from commercial and both of them should have been in the ring, so at least we would have a little bit longer of a match. Because this, this was a waste of time. They should have put more... this the, t the time that the entrances in this match took into Mark Henry, Daniel Bryan. I'll get to that match in a second. But, I mean, you know, so one out of five, I was not very impressed. But Ted DiBiase squashes Jinder Mahal, uh, pins Jinder with a, uh, what's a, a dream streak is what that was called. Third match of the night, which is Mark Henry versus Daniel Bryan. I gave it two out of five Yellow Rangers. It was an eh match. As I said, the second ma last match should have just not even been there. And they should have dumped all that time into Mark Henry Daniel Bryan. Because this match could have been good, but I think this match needed more time. I think Daniel Bryan could work well with Mark Henry. It's just you need it to be a little bit more believable. So you need Daniel Bryan to, to work and wear Mark Henry down before it'll be believable. Because usually how these matches go with these two, at least between last week and this week, is that Daniel Bryan kind of makes a comeback and works on Big... Uh, I almost said Big Show. On Mark Henry, and he doesn't really get too far with him. But I think if the match went longer, I think it would be more believable that Daniel Bryan would wear Mark Henry out, and then Daniel Bryan would have more of a chance of winning. Uh, in the end, Daniel Bryan eggs on Mark Henry, and... Daniel Bryan gets a World's Strongest Slam for it, and he gets pinned. So, two out of five Yellow Rangers, not exactly that impressive. Afterward, Mark Henry goes for, you know, the, the, the chair. Daniel Bryan gets a hold of the chair, uses it on Mark Henry. Mark Henry gets pissed, kills Mark, uh, Daniel Bryan with uh, another World's Strongest Slam, a splash, uh, whatever you can think of. Then he goes to set up the, the chair on Daniel Bryan's leg. And then the Big Show comes out to make the save. Uh, this is, I mean, the match wasn't that good, but the, the segment to build the story between these two was actually really good, I think. Um, Henry, uh, Big Show comes out, makes a save. Henry tries to use the chair to keep Big Show at bay. Henry hits Daniel Bryan with the chair. Then Big Show tries to get in the ring, and he punches the chair out of Mark Henry's hand. Mark Henry bows out gracefully while the Big Show gets in the ring. Big Show invites Mark Henry to stick around for Big Show's next match. Fourth match of the night, which is Big Show versus three local jobbers. I give this 5 out of 5 Alpha 5s. And the reason why is that I usually use Alpha 5s for jobbing matches, because I, I hold, just like Diva matches, I hold jobber matches at a different standard, because, and I look for certain different things than if there's, you know, really professionals in there. Um, this was a really good, like, they actually let the jobbers get one up on Big Show. I mean, Big Show was was on his knee. I think he was on his back once with the jobbers. Then, as we all know, Big Show came back, uh, did a double choke slam on two guys. One of the guys tries to leave. He's like, I'm out, dude. Big Show goes after him, drags him in the ring. It's a we weapon of mass destruction for the win. I think this is a really well done jobber match, especially for the Big Show, because normally those matches are pathetic. But this match was really good. I, I For a jobber match, I actually said it was good. And um, Henry says that he's not really impressed with that. He didn't. He didn't think that was very impressive at all. And at Survivor Series, Mark Henry is going to leave a lasting impression on Big Show. Next up, we go to the Diva match, which is the fifth match of the night, which is Tamina versus Alicia Fox, A.K.A. According to Oksana, her name Alicia Fox is Rihanna. I get this two out of five Pink Rangers. It was kind of an okay Diva match. Alicia Fox is a decent wrestler. Tamina is definitely a good wrestler. They just need to give these gals time and decent booking to do it right. I mean, normally diva matches on superstars are where you got to find your good divas mas matches. Two out of five, not bad. Not going to waste too much time on it, though. Backstage, we have uh, Sheamus, and he basically uh, Matt Stryker asks him if Sheamus if he has a mean streak, and Sheamus says that he has spirit, or he's spirited, whatever. 
Next up, we have the sixth match of the night, which is LAX 2.0 or the Filthy Animals 2.0, you decide, which is Hunico Epico versus the Usos. I gave this 3 out of 5 Black Rangers. It was a bad tag match, but you really knew that they were putting Hunico, Epico, and Primo over. So the Usos really didn't stand much of a chance, but it was a decent tag match is what I cared about. Uh, in, in the end, Hunico and Epico were just... They basically double-teamed one of the Usos and got the pen. Afterward, they basically gang-raped, you know, gang-raped the other Uso, and that's it. I mean, they were just basically leaving their lasting impression here on SmackDown, and this is apparently the debut of their new state, Mexican-Caribbean stable, whatever you want to call it. Um, Alright, seventh match of the night, which is the main event, is going to be Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett. I gave this four out of five Green Rangers. I thought this was a good, solid main event. Um, these two guys did really well together. Uh, Barrett made Orton play the brawling game for a while, which was really impressive, because normally Orton will go for the fast-paced when he's going up against a guy like Barrett. However, Barrett more made Randy Orton play the brawling game, and Barrett dominated most of this match, if you watch it. The crowd, though, was not very behind Barrett for being his hometown, which is kind of sad, because I always like to see a heel crowd, like a heel get over with his hometown crowd, even though he's a heel. So I really was kind of disappointed with that in the uh, uh, Blackpool fans. Uh, in the end, Orton goes for an RKO, but Barrett reverses the RKO, puts a thumb in the eye of Randy Orton, rolls up Randy Orton for the three. So I thought it was a de I thought it was a pretty good main event, and I mean, you know, yeah, they, they say that it wasn't a clean victory because or or Barrett hit the thumb in the eye of Orton, but what are you gonna do? He's a heel, whatever. Uh, Barrett got the, the clean three, no outside interference, so I think in Zamario's book, this might be a clean victory, although I doubt it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, what did I give this week of SmackDown as a whole? I gave it four out of five Blue Rangers. There were, I, I originally wrote three down, but the more now that I've actually gone through it and read it, I think I'm going to give it a four, because there was just a lot of good action, there was a lot of good storytelling, um, there was there was a lag in the middle. I mean, the, the Ted DiBiase and General Hall match should not have been there. And the Mark Henry Daniel Bryan match should have been longer and told a better story, I think. Um, but the Mark Henry Big Show segments kind of recovered that and made it more of a... They're, you know, obviously because we should be focusing on them because they're the world title match at the pay-per-view. But, I mean, the opening bout was fantastic. Sheamus and Christian was fantastic. So, main event was not bad whatsoever either, and I think that's great Barrett went over. Um... Now we're going to move into the afterward festivities, which will be Booker T's quote of the night. Take out Christian. I mean, the kid is resilient. Take out Christian. The kid has resiliency. So if you take Christian away, he has resiliency? But wouldn't he have resiliency if he was still there? I mean, if you take Christian out, then there's nothing left. Booker, you make no sense. Retire, or get in the ring and do what you're good at, wrestling. And the Mon Mon of this week goes to the match of the night montage goes to Christian versus Sheamus. Everyone enjoy.
Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of SmackDown to my review. Please go to WrestlingRevolution.com, the Epic Center for all your wrestling needs. We have merchandise, forums, uh, news, blog TV. It's got, we just got a sloop full of, of stuff. So head there, register. It's free. We have contests. You can win free stuff. And that's it for this week. It was a decent week. I'm very pleased to say I'm a SmackDown fan, unlike last week. Raw sucked this past Monday, so I figured this past today's SmackDown would be good. So I am Bobby Black from the Unscored Circle and Wrestling Revolution. And please comment, like, subscribe, and I hope you enjoy it.